To an outside observer, it seems you're almost a 180 from uh, Senators McCain and Graham who talk about vigorous action overseas and seem to be, well, somewhat indulgent when it comes to, uh, to accommodating illegal aliens who have come to the United States via amnesty. What, what well, should I be the I answer? Well, I am 180 from the two men that you mentioned. I do respect them, but uh, I am certainly in a different mindset. And for me personally, I mean, I, I still go to Walter Reed, J.D., to visit the wounded. I was over there back in September, and I saw two Marines from Camp Lejeune. One 23-year-old man, I will never forget him, lost both legs and arm walking the roads of Afghanistan. The second Marine from Camp Lejeune that I saw that same day to talk to had lost both legs walking the roads of Afghanistan. And we can't even walk the borders of America to protect the American people from people coming here illegally. Uh, somewhere along the way, I mean, that's why the American people, J.D., is so frustrated with Washington, D.C., quite frankly. Mindful of our border situation and uh, the use of our military, perhaps, do you advocate uh, putting our standing military on our borders north and south? Have we reached the situation where we really need a fortress America? J.D., I'll answer you this way. I think we need to do a better job of securing our borders, whether it be the Canadian border or the border with Central and South America. Absolutely. And I don't know what the numbers should be, but I think we need to do a better job because when you have 40,000 children to come to this country illegally. Uh, that's one reason I didn't vote for the Cromobus bill, $1.1 trillion in spending. And there's millions of dollars in that bill to help the president take care of the 40,000 children uh, who are in this country illegally. There's money in that bill to also help the school systems hire a, a interpreter so when the children go to school in America that the English speaking teacher that there'll be interpreted to, to help the young child from Central America to understand what the teacher's trying to say. I mean, it's, it's, J.D., since you were here in Congress, it is absolutely out of control. And do you have any confidence at all? We have about a minute and a half in this segment, and then we're going to hold you over with your permission to talk about the reason we brought you in about the 9-11 the sure. report. But in the minute that remains in this segment, Walter, do you have any confidence in this current commander-in-chief when it comes to securing the borders? No, absolutely not. I, th I think he has proven that he will disregard the Constitution of the United States, and I think that is not what we need to secure the borders. Fair enough. Walter, one other question. The existing Republican leadership in the House and the Senate, has anything happened this week that would tell you that they're responding to public opinion and want to get tough now on illegal immigration? Uh, 30 seconds remain, sir. J.D., we'll have to wait and see. I, I don't know, to be honest with you. We're just going to have to wait and see. Specifically, what do you believe is contained in those classified pages? Well, J.D., let me say first that Senator Bob Graham from Florida participated in the news conference uh, two days ago, and he has been the one that's been driving this issue. And I read a book that he wrote when he left, after he left the Senate and, and let me make a, a point very quickly to get to your question. Senator Graham was a co-chair along with Senator Richard Shelby uh, that wrote the 9-11 report, and they both have said the 28 pages should be declassified. It was the Bush administration that decided that 28 pages out of the report before the report could be made public needed to be classified. I, along with Steve Lynch, Thomas Massey, and several other members of the House, we've read the 28 pages. And I would say there's nothing, absolutely nothing, about national security in those 28 pages. It is about relationships. And as Bob Graham said the other day himself, and this has been printed, that he knows that the Saudis helped finance the 9-11 attack. And all we're saying is that the American people, and especially the 9-11 families who are still in pain, should have a right to see the information and make their own judgment based on the information. Now, Congressman Jones, has the, have the Saudis had any reaction to this? Well, this was our third news conference, and uh, every time we brought members of the family in to participate because they're the ones that still feel the pain. President Obama twice has told the 9-11 families in two separate occasions that he will declassify this information. 
This is a bipartisan effort. My, my uh, Democrat colleague, Stephen Lynch from Massachusetts, is with, this, with me on this effort. And there is no reason that you cannot have a strong country and a democracy when you will not give the truth, especially about the tragedy of 9-11, to the American people.